So hello listeners and thank you very much for tuning in to this podcast. Today we're very lucky to have got some time with a gentleman called Tim and he's going to be talking to us about his experience and use with regards to INCO terms. So welcome Tim, thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, good morning. Um, just to get us going, could you just explain to the listeners of the podcast please a little bit about yourself and, and your business please? Uh, so my business is Sino Trading Limited. We import product from the Far East uh, into Europe. Uh, we have an office in UK, which is a sales arm. And then we have another office in Changzhou in China, which is about three hours drive north of Shanghai. Uh, through that office, we do all of the product and more importantly, the quality assurance of all the various products that we buy for the different industries that we, we provide. Um, so the industries we focus on are automotive and aerospace, uh, doing metal and plastic latches and um, engine sub-assemblies, for example. Yep, I see. Sounds really interesting. Then with regards to that, you say you work with, with aerospace, for example, and, and automotive. Can you give us a little bit more detail on the products that you have manufactured, please? Yeah, absolutely. So we do um, turn parts, which uh, go into the engine for companies like uh, Jaguar Land Rover. We do um, safety critical pressings for, for Nissan. Um, and then we do parts of the roll cage for Mini Cooper and they are um, they're more turn parts there. But we also do castings and door handles and, and yeah, anything really, visual as well as structural products. Wow, a real array of products. Sounds really interesting. And you mentioned there that um, you have a setup in, in China. Have you ever had any sort of ethical concerns with regards to the conduct of the workers in China? No, uh, we, uh, I visit China five times a year. When I go there, we don't book appointments. We just walk into whatever factory we are uh, sourcing from at that time. We yeah. source roughly 60 uh, factories at any one time and our, our employees also uh, going to these factories unannounced. Uh, we have bigger customers who demand that we um, register our factories with SEDEX or ESDI or other organizations like that who do ethical auditing themselves, but I, I've never seen a problem uh, without those, um, those systems in place. That's really good and really reassuring to, to hear because obviously in, in our profession we do hear a lot about ethical concerns and it's it's good and it's reassuring to understand that things are changing and there's policies and processes in place that are really making a difference. So yeah, that's really good. And, and with regards to, to the products that you have manufactured, what countries do you import them to please, Tim? Um, all throughout the world, really. We do a lot into UK and then um, lots of European companies, Germany, Spain, Italy, Slovakia, uh, Hungary as well. Um, we do composite decking into Ireland and um, stoves into Kenya wow. all different, and, uh, different products, but using the automotive quality standards to um, assess the um, manufacturing capabilities of the factory and, and then apply those to the producing. So a real global affair then, you're really literally taking everything from, from China right across the world. We we'll do anything. Wow, amazing. And with regards to the um, importing of products, do you tend to use air, sea, rail, road? What type of, of transportation methods do you use? Uh, predominantly, it's uh, sea from China. Um, occasionally, if we're late or if the if a supply chain gets ahead of us or a customer needs something quick, we'll we'll use air freight, be it TNT for the smaller shipments or other freight forwarders for bigger ones who seem to be more competitive. Um, I looked at the rail and roughly a 30 day service door to door. Uh, the rail is 20 days roughly, but um, at the moment, all the slots are booked up about three months in advance by people mm. who the product will be ready on that date. And it's obviously perishables that need to be in Europe uh, quicker than sea freight. So you just can't get a booking at the moment on the rail. I see, I see. And, and with regards to the INCO terms, do you and, and your company have a preferred INCO term that you tend to use more than any others? Yeah, we tend to do DDP, uh, delivered duty paid, just so we can give our customer one price, including our service, the product and their door. 
I see. And do you ever use any others or is it DDP solely? Yeah, we certainly do. We have bigger customers like Argos and B&Q who um, have massive freight contracts and can get freight a lot cheaper than I can. Uh, so we use FOB Shanghai or FOB Ningbo or wherever else it's coming out of. Yeah. For those customers and then others have their own trucks in and around China so they'll use X works we'll, we'll supply to them X works oh, I see okay so potentially that could be someone that's that's come into China and, and made a delivery and then they're going to come and, and collect their own goods to save having to, to send another vehicle out maybe and taking advantage of reverse logistics perhaps exactly right yeah I think that's exactly what's happening I see yeah and obviously then it's a sustainable solution as well which is always good something that we look out for in, in this day and age absolutely yeah um my my final question tim please you mentioned there that your preferred term is ddp you do have some x works and, and you use fob if you had a client that was adamant that they wanted a term that you wouldn't normally use would it be a deal breaker for you or how would you go about um challenging them to maybe use a different term I think I'd try and push them down my required term of DDP. If they wanted to do FOB, I would point out the fact that freight rates fluctuate wildly. Um, um, and also that I then don't have control of shipment that comes into UK. If I'm using uh, DDP, I can monitor the ship. I can chase my hauler who I have a great relationship with. Mm. Um, if people want to use their own, their own um, methods of getting, into UK through FOB, for example, maybe they maybe don't know quite what they're doing compared to perhaps our haulier. And so, yeah, I would push them towards DDP just because it's hassle free. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, in my experience as well, and obviously we've worked together in the past, DDP tends to be, in my experience, the, the easiest option. And I know when, when we've worked together before, if we ever needed anything whilst the products were in between your manufacturers and, and our site, it was simply a case of picking up the phone, having a chat, and, and you sorted everything out for us. So from my perspective, I can absolutely see why, why that would be the chosen one. Yeah, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it's more, more aggro for us, but at least we know exactly what's going on. And that way, hopefully, the customer has a better, um, a better experience with us, even if it isn't our fault if they've chosen their own FOB or whatever else. Term. absolutely absolutely well 10 15 years on tim we're still speaking so you must have done just, it right just. Time. <laughs> fantastic well that's great that's all my questions tim um i know you're a busy man and you've got another meeting to get to shortly so thank you for your time on behalf of myself and the listeners and i'm sure as i have the uh, the listeners to knowledge will find this extremely interesting and learn a lot from your experience so thank you very much indeed thank you nice to speak to you thanks katie take care bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.